Hey, hey YouTubers, what is going on? My name is JC and this is the Cure and Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and grilling on Tuesdays, DIY stuff on Fridays. Welcome back to the garage. Beautiful Friday morning. Uh, was supposed to be out fishing this morning, but uh, just couldn't get my behind out of bed at five in the morning. Uh, by any remote chance you landed here looking for recipes, please do me a favor. Click on the title of the channel where you will find not one, but two dedicated playlists to all of the recipes. Over the last few weeks, I've received several messages on my website and on social media. Uh, people suggesting that I make videos on uh, tips for on woodworking. Uh, that's extremely, uh, you know, extremely humbling and, and I'm honored that you think that I'm worthy of that honor. But uh, it is important that I disclose that I am self-taught and more often than not, how I get, how I achieve the final results, uh, it's not pretty. Uh, this is not only on DIY stuff, but also in, in cooking, for example, people often criticize and give me thumbs down on my recipes uh, just because they have a perception that that's not how it's done. They never tasted the dish, they have not even tried it, but yet they are placing judgment on it. Uh, I got into woodworking because I got married very young, uh, slacking off was not an option, and uh, I did everything in my power to earn a living. Uh, this is me about 25 years ago. That's one of my uh, speakers that I designed. It's a transmission line. And I saw quite a few of them. I was actually I was quite successful at that. Uh, nevertheless, if you look at the finish of the product and you saw how I built that in my kitchen, uh, the, you know, the things didn't add up. The final product did not add up to how I got there. And I think that those experience have uh, taught me a lot of things, how to use jig and how to get around not having expensive tools. So yeah, when it comes to uh, making videos on tips for woodworking, I, I think I have something to offer. So uh, I would greatly appreciate if you give me, uh, if you comment and if you let me know if I'm on the right track. I hope that you enjoy the video and here are some tips on woodworking. Check it out. <music> Tip on woodworking number one has to do with safety and something I actually talked about on another video. This has to do with using a table saw zero clearance insert. It is unlikely that somebody who is just getting started in woodworking is going to buy a two or three thousand dollar table saw. If you buy an entry level saw like my General International TS4100, you're not gonna find many over-the-counter accessories for it. If you want, and you should, get a zero clearance insert like this one, you may have to make one. But whenever in a bind, consider using painter's tape as a way to keep pieces from dropping into the blade well. This is not a perfect solution, but it's better than nothing. Tips on woodworking number two has to do with knowing the position of your table saw's blade. A good representation of the center of the blade is tracing a line from a tooth at the top to a corresponding one at the bottom. We can then use a square to set that mark at 90 degrees vertically. From there, we can make marks in the throw insert on both sides of the blade, indicating where the center of the shaft is. This is sometimes called the high point, and is a crucial mark for setting the blade height accurately. The second blade position mark we need to make is the path. Using a straight edge, make markings on your deck where the blade path is. This is very helpful when cutting rabbits or other blind cuts because it allows us to accurately position the material on the blade's path. Tips on woodworking number three is actually more of a tool or tool hack than a tip. If you have one of these, you know they're awesome for cross-cutting small pieces.
However, not very useful for cutting a sheet that is 20 or 30 inches wide. But with the help of one of these aluminum angles available at all major hardware stores, we can fix that. We'll start by drilling through the two pieces at one time. Then countersinking the aluminum angle, making sure that the head of the screw you're using fits into the countersink. Then we're going to tap your speed square. If your drill has a slow speed, you can do it with a drill, otherwise just do it by hand. We then fix the two pieces together. I'm using some 632 by 38 flatheads, but a little smaller, a little bigger will work. I also cut a small little piece from the end. This was a 48 inch piece because being one inch means that it's the same space from the edge to the blade for my Ryobi cordless saw. That allows me to align whatever mark I make perfect with the blade every time. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you next Friday for another DIY video. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thank you.